Man, 2021 was definitely a very interesting year. And for me personally, it's been a solid year, especially through all the learning experiences that I went through. And hopefully you guys were able to also have a great 2021. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys my progress that I've made towards my investing goal in 2021, as well as my goals for the end of 2022. And hopefully at the end of this video, you guys can set up goals for yourself that you are able to achieve. It's really important to set up goals because not only does it help you motivate yourself, but sometimes just writing it down and speaking your mind will actually allow you to reach your end goals. And hopefully this video will help at least get you into the habit of making goals. And for me, as a creator and as somebody that is all into this investing atmosphere, I hope that we can all reach our goals for 2022. So anyways, if you guys want to see if I reach my goals or not for 2021, let's take a look. With that being said, cue that intro. Before we get this video started, I'm going to be talking about how I did in 2021 before we talk about the goal setting for 2022. And go ahead, guys, pause the video right now and write down if you guys were able to achieve your goals for 2021 or if you guys were able to surpass them. Either way, let me know down in the comments down below. I'm definitely interested to see. So anyways, let's take a look at how I formatted this. So I have right here on the very left side the accounts the different type of strategies that I have. And I'll kind of go into a little bit more detail on that as we work through each one. I have the end amount for 2020, as well as how much I added per year, how much I added per average week. And I'll kind of explain this. This was kind of weird and I've kind of formatted better for the year of 2022. And then we don't really have to pay too much of attention to this. This is just kind of like the projections that helped me get to my projected total. And this is my goals total and then this is the actual total so right off rip you guys can see that i ended off just slightly under my projected total which is cool and all i mean it is what it is not everyone is going to be able to achieve their goals but part of the thing about having goal is it helps you at least have a number in mind that you want to achieve so at the end of the day i'll be straight up i didn't achieve my goal i was very close to it i just changed this number to 38 so i can feel like i achieved that goal but at the end of the day it's been totally fun and we're going to kind of go ahead and explain all the things that changed up this year. So let's start over here with the Acorns account. So with the Acorns account, I actually started off with the Acorns app when I didn't really know too much about investing. And then somewhere in February, I decided not to use Acorns at all. I mean, I felt that I could outperform the S&P 500 by going into some growth companies. And as we all know, this year has not been too kind to some of the growth companies. I mean, of course, there's some that have been really good. For example, you know, Tesla always performs really well. But then I've been also into a lot of stocks that have not been performing that well. So at the end of 2020, I had a projected, I had an amount of $1,700. And then at the time I was adding about $25 every single week. And then I was just assuming that I would get about $12 because of roundups and roundups is like kind of a feature in acorns where if I were to use my debit card, a part of the portion. So let's just say something was like 95 cents, five cents would go back into the acorns and it would be invested. So that was a feature that I was no longer using as I transitioned from Acorns to M1 Finance for my growth uh, portfolio. But anyways, I was looking to add around $3,009 and I was hoping for a 9% appreciation. And anyways, the goal for that was $4,000. At the end of the day, I was actually able to hit $4,005. So we definitely achieved that goal. What really happened was somewhere along the lines the portfolio was not doing that well at all. So I decided to kind of just chuck in a lot of money. Um, I believe it was around May, we were seeing very, very bad lows, or in my opinion, they were good lows because I was able to just chuck in a ton of, mark of money into the market. So for example, I remember uh, Tesla went down to like $500. So we we're just totally adding back then. So that's an example of how it's great idea to buy the dip. And I have a whole video on that. So you guys can definitely check that out later. Also for my Roth IRA, I also transitioned from Acorns into my own in M1 Finance. <clears throat> and all the links will be in the description if you guys wanna check it out for yourself. So I don't know why, but I have a different strategy than a lot of people when it comes to investing to accounts. I like to put my money into my M1 Finance dividend account first and prefer that over some of my tax advantage accounts like my Roth IRA, which a lot of people don't agree with. But in my opinion, I want to retire before I actually reach that age. And then maybe I'll live off of my uh, tax advantage accounts, but to this day, I don't really invest as much into my 
my Roth IRA, which I should, but who knows, a lot of things change in as the years go by. So as you guys can see, I ended off with $457 in my Roth IRA, and I was looking to add about $600, and I was just adding a little bit by paycheck. And as things kind of changed throughout, I got rid of Acorns and transitioned to M1 Finance. Currently, I'm adding a lot more than I was. I think when I was adding it by paycheck, it was about like $10 per week, which really wasn't that it wasn't that much at all compared to what I'm doing now. I'm doing about $100 now. So as you kind of grow your income and as you kind of settle down in life, you're going to be changing a lot of different ways that you strategize your portfolios. So this is just a quick example. As you guys can see, my projected total is 1100 and then my goals was about 1000 We got to about 2500 and hopefully I'm able to to get to the fully maximization of my Roth IRA at one point or another as my income increases. And that's all something that you guys should be doing as well. If it's possible, definitely try to increase your income because then as you do that, you're able to invest more and more, which will help you retire at an earlier age, as well as you manage your finances a little bit better or as long as you manage it well, you know what I mean? So anyways, that's it for that Roth IRA. Let's take a look at my M1 Finance, otherwise known as my dividend portfolio. At the time, this was my only M1 account, but now I have my M1 account and dividends, my Roth IRA, and now my growth account. So definitely loving that platform maybe i'll do a video on it actually i do think i have a video already on it so i'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check that out but anyways this is my first and major account that i really like i'm hoping to be able to retire off dividends if you guys didn't already know that so anyways i ended the year off at about the year 2020 off about 2100 and i was looking to add about 3900 so that's 75 dollars per week and then i reinvest my dividends so that would come out to about six thousand six hundred eighty one dollars as time went on, I actually decided to invest more and more. So I went from 75 to 100 and then to 100 to 115. And now I'm doing 150 per week. So we're definitely trying to hit that goal. Um, I kind of like to throw up high numbers just to see if I achieve them. So I put 10,000, but I was actually able to get to 8,000, which isn't too far off of the goals. But at the same time, it's better than my projected. So I'm definitely happy with that. If you guys are into dividend investing, I would highly check out the videos that I have on dividend investing. This is my favorite form of investing because it's, for the most part, very really easy and pretty much anyone can do it as long as you understand your time horizon. And I won't go too much into detail because the videos are already getting pretty long and probably boring because these are all my goals and I'm sure you guys have your own goals. So anyways, we'll hop into the next part where we're talking about public. I had about $193 with public and this is an account that I just kind of had on the side. And to be honest, I wasn't really, you know, investing to this regularly like I am for these other stocks or these other accounts. So we're just going to kind of ignore that. I did end up just putting in some extra money. So we're just going to say that I slightly beat my goal and that's just because I added money on the dip on a certain stock. But anyways, let's take a look at Robinhood. Robinhood is the brokerage that I use mostly for trading and with options. Uh, I've been learning a lot about options, covered calls, and selling puts. So anyways, we started off with 2021 with about $6,219. And I did add some couple thousand. So with that being said, the goal was to get around 10000 And our projected was about 9500 And we did not end off that well with 7800 I put a lot of money into kind of growth stocks. I wouldn't really call it growth stocks, more like penny stocks and speculations. And with those speculations, I did not hit any home runs. I mean, I did hit a few here and there. But for the most part, I had to do a lot of tax loss harvest. Let's just say that. And anyways, let's take a look at Coinbase. So in the beginning of 2020 or 2021, I had about $100 into crypto. And the whole goal was to add about $25 per week. And then as the months went by, I think around February, I just kind of threw a huge lump sum in. So you can see that I'm very far away from my goal. And that's just because I put that huge lump sum in. I was doing a lot more research into Bitcoin and crypto. And I kind of thought, you know what, not only are all the fundamentals there or in all the possible growth and continuation of crypto there but i mean the asset just keeps going up so why not just throw a lump sum and kind of just yolo it and you know to this date it's been a pretty good investment i'm not up too much i'm not down too much i think as of date crypto is around forty eight thousand, and i got in about forty two thousand for bitcoin that is so at the end of the day i'm slightly above break even um i'm hoping it just has a nice little boom but I do want to get to at least half a Bitcoin by the end of 2022. And you never know with the price just increasing like crazy. 
right now we are down a little bit at a dip so hopefully i'll be able to kind of build my position and we'll just kind of have to see at the end of the day so with weeble i just put in a little bit of money as well so we had about 2700 2800 by the end of 2020 and this is one that i kind of just found a lot of stocks that i kind of like for the long term things like tattooed chef shift technologies and these are companies that i think are going to be great in the long term but to date they have not been performing that well so as you guys can see my projected total is about 3600 and i ended off with 2200 these investments are not doing well as of now so i'm just kind of settling covered calls and then taking that profit and then just reinvesting it into the stocks to kind of build out the position i'm not actively adding money so it is what it is and one of my other huge major changes for 2021 was I had a huge sneaker collection in which sneakers do appreciate quite quite well so i'll leave a link over here at the top right and talking about sneaker investing and this is something that i started before investing in general i had about nine thousand dollars worth of sneakers which i know is quite a lot and to end the year off i actually finished right around that 9500 mark <clears throat> and that's just because honestly i found that sneaker investing it is lucrative but at the end of the day I rather have and own money into stocks than into sneakers so that's just a huge change that happened for me in 2021 but nonetheless i still have a good amount of sneakers i'm not looking to add any more in fact i actually plan to liquidate them and then put them right into crypto or into long-term stocks so we'll definitely have to see but that's basically where i ended off in 2021 so today i'm sitting around 38 3900 my goal as you got as i said before i kind of changed this up a little bit but it was around 39 to 4500 uh 39 to 45000 and we are finished at 39000 pretty much so pretty close to the goal like i said before the importance of making a goal and setting a goal is it motivates you and you can kind of see it a little bit in my projected totals i had to, you know i had to add a little bit just to kind of reach my goals but it did motivate me to put a little bit more time into research and learning a little bit more. But that's pretty much it for how I did in 2021. Let me know down in the comments down below how you guys did. And this is going to be kind of the fun part of the video where we talk about the goals for 2022. All right, so this is a little bit more interesting part of the video. And I don't blame you guys if you skip the last part just to get to this part. But anyways, let's take a look. So first off, we got my growth account. And this is an account that I'm really hoping booms. So anyways... As of date, we are adding $100 every single week. So we ended off, like I said before in the previous part, about $4,000. We're looking to add about $5,200 this year, and hopefully we'll get a 9% appreciation. So our goal is about $10,000 for that growth account, which would be great. I mean, these are good stocks that I'm investing into. I have a bunch of stocks like Amazon, Disney, Google, but then I also have a little bit more riskier ones like EXPI. I don't know if you want to put Tesla into that or not. And then, you know, a few ARC, I have an ARC W, I believe, in this growth account. And again, I'll leave all the links in the description so you guys can check out my accounts for themselves. Or you guys can just check out my old videos, you know what I mean? A little bit self, a little bit, you know, self-promotion here. But hey, man, I ain't shameful about it. And then next off, we have that Roth IRA. And then we are looking to add, again, $100 every single week. So that would come out to about $5,200. And then we are aiming to do about 7% appreciation. This is a little bit more of a safer strategy, so I'm not expecting too much of that appreciation. And again, guys, remember, the S&P 500 did like 28 points, something like that, percent in 2021, which is just insane. That's amazing. I don't think it will do that much. So we're going to say a safe, conservative 7%. And that would put us right around 8200 and maybe you know we put the goal a little bit higher than the projected here so 10,000 hopefully we'll be able to get there again the most that you can put in per year for the Roth IRA is 6,000 I believe so hopefully we'll be able to max that out but I did leave a little bit room for you know growth right here as well so who knows maybe we'll be able to definitely surpass that goal but at the end of the day we'll see at the end of 2022 so if you guys want to see that Stick around, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you then. And I'm just going to kind of blast through these because I don't want to waste a lot of you guys' time because these are my goals at the end of the time. At the end of the day, these, this video is mostly for me to see if I'll be able to achieve that goal or not. So anyways, here we have the M1 dividend account, and this is my favorite account once again. I love it. So anyways, we ended off with 8100 this year, and then we are looking to add about 7800 this year. So pretty much doubling the portfolio just by adding the amount of money, which is $150 per week. So then with that total, we would be around 
almost 16,000. We are hoping for a 10% increase. I have a lot of growth dividend stocks in here. So things like Apple, Microsoft, that, those make a huge part of my portfolio. And then a very small to the ones that don't really grow as much, for example, Cisco, Coca-Cola, AT&T, Verizon. Those are a very, very small portion of my portfolio, whereas Apple, Microsoft, uh, even Target, these are the huger parts of my portfolio. So anyways, we are hoping for that 10%, which is pretty big, but at the end of the day, we'll have to see. And this is also not incurring for uh, the dividends that are being reinvested back into the portfolio. So that being said, we're hoping for $17,000 in this portfolio by the end of the year, which is just amazing. We did hit a huge milestone this year of 2021 of $100 in dividends, which is awesome. You know, I love to see it. Hopefully one day we'll be able to retire off of this account, but we'll have to see. <clears throat> it's definitely going to be a long journey. So that being said, $17,000. Hopefully we'll be able to hit that. Again, public, I'm not really too interested. I just kind of have that list here. So we're just going to skip right over that. With my Robinhood account, I'm hoping to be able to do a little bit better with my options. I'm really getting to the habit of selling puts with my extra cash, taking those extra cash from those selling puts, and then just putting into stronger companies that I believe in the long term. For example, I was selling puts on companies like Tattooed Chef, um, ChargePoint, and so on, Palantir. And then we're taking those profits and putting into stocks for the long term. For example, right now I'm really trying to build a position to Corsair Gaming, which is one that I believe will do well in 2022 and probably the future. And then, yeah, that's just a quick example of what I'm doing in that Robinhood account versus where I was just trading pennies back in the day of 2021 and 2020 so hopefully we'll be able to hit i mean we have a projected about 9,000, but i want to far su suppress sir i cannot even talk right now surpass that goal so at least getting 12,500. but then they will have to see then onto that robin hood or onto that crypto and coinbase account oh, man like i said before i really want to get to at least half a bitcoin I really do like Bitcoin. I like Ethereum as well, but we'll have to see. So right now, as I talked about before, I'm liquidating those shoes and I'm looking to add some of the profits or at least some of the you know proceeds from that sneaker selling into my crypto account. So hopefully I'll be able to hit that. And maybe, I mean, I doubt it will be half of Bitcoin, but we'll definitely have to see. At the end of the day, I'm looking for about 8,500 and with the goal of 10,000, maybe we'll get somewhere along there. It also depends how well Bitcoin does. You know, I'm expecting a 15% appreciation in Bitcoin by the end of the year, probably way higher than it. I mean, we might even hit 100K, which would be, you know, a 100% increase, but we will have to see. 2022 is going to be a long year, so we'll definitely see. With Weeble, same thing, just selling puts like Robinhood. Or over here, I'm selling more covered calls and then just kind of reinvesting those back into the same companies. So I'll have to see. To be honest, with Weeble and Public, these are the two ones that I don't really use as much. They're kind of my background portfolios. So we'll have to see. And then this year, like I said before, we have something new. We are not going too much into sneaker investing. We are going into these cash flow ETFs. I have a pretty pretty big purchase coming up this year so what i'm really doing is i'm just adding money into this cash level etf which is one that i kind of talked about in a previous video so i'll link that at the top and then with that we are hoping to add about a hundred dollars per week and then with that we are going to get a total of twelve thousand. and this one is not really a high appreciation portfolio but we do get a good amount of dividends i think it was about ten percent so these are uh, cover call ETFs where you can get anywhere from 7 to 10 percent in dividends, which of course you do have to pay taxes on. But the reason why I like it is because it's not really that volatile. So if the market does bad, I still know I'll be getting my dividends, and these cash flow ETFs are not gonna kind of get hit as hard, maybe like a four or five, six percent decrease. And again, no one really knows the future, but at the end of the day, this is a purchase that I do have to make at the end of 2022. So I'm really hoping that this will help me out. So it's kind of weird and it's kind of hard to put and project it as a goal because I do plan to cash this amount out, but we're going to leave it here anyways, just to kind of see if that purchase is necessary or not. And just to kind of see if we achieve that goal. So with all in all being said, we are projected at 69,000 nice to a goal of 82,000. So we're going to keep our goal around 69,000 to 82,000. So hopefully we'll be able to hit that goal. And <clears throat> this is our money goal, which, you know, at the end of the day is something that's really um, up to a person, whether or not that's good or not. But the real goals I'm looking for for 2022 is all about growth, 
growing this community and growing my subscriber account because you know at the end of the day i do love making these videos and if it does help one person even if it's just one person with one small information and that helps that means a lot to me so hopefully this video is able to help you guys create your own goals or if you guys just wanted to see a peek inside of my brain hopefully this was fun and entertaining again i know this video is really rushed and i'm speaking at a million miles per hour and it's pretty much not even edited I still hope you guys did enjoy it or at least make a goal for yourself and let me know again down in the comments down below what your goals are i think i'm around 135 136 subscribers so i'm gonna say this for myself right now i hope i get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2022 and even better i hope the quality of my videos are more insightful for everyone including myself and they are a lot better so anyways that's gonna be it for the end of this video it's been pretty long. So anyways, guys, take care. Peace out and good luck to all you guys in 2022.